Antarctica once supported a vast tropical rainforest with a wide variety of exotic plants and animals about 90 million years ago. But after the Ice Age arrived, everything changed and the area evolved into the tundra that is more familiar to us today. There are a lot of mysteries hidden beneath the ground because of the land masses 13.7 million square kilometers, the majority of which is entirely covered in ice and snow all year long. What is this mysterious and creepy phenomenon that exists all across this uninhabited continent? Join us as we explore scientists' terrifying new discovery frozen in ice that changes everything. Nothing is simple when you're in the midst of the Filchner Rhone ice shelf, five-hour flight from the closest outpost in Antarctica. Geologist James Smith of the British Antarctic Survey survived over three months of sub-zero temperatures, sleeping in a tent and eating dehydrated food despite the fact that it was the southern summer. He needed seafloor sediment, which was trapped under a half mile of ice, to research the history of the floating shelf, but the science itself was a pain. Smith and his colleagues had to melt 20 tons of snow in order to produce 20,000 litres of hot water, which they then poured through a pipe lowered down a borehole in order to reach it. They had to chip away at the ice for 20 hours before they could ultimately break through the shelf. They then lowered a GoPro camera and a device to capture the sediment. Yet the collector returned empty-handed. They gave it another shot, still bare. Again, nothing is simple in this situation. The instrument's round trips took an hour. Later that evening, Smith examined the video in his tent and noticed a very obvious issue. The video depicts a descent through 3,000 feet of bluish-green ice that abruptly ends and gives way to deep sea water. Before the sea floor, mostly light-colored silt which Smith was after, but also something dark, can be seen, the camera coasts another 1,600 feet. That mysterious object turned out to be a boulder, which the camera captures as it falls face first into the sediment. The camera rapidly corrects itself and scans the rock, exposing something completely unrelated to what the geologists were looking for. In actuality, it was something incredibly unlikely. Life. The absolute best site for a one in a million chance to discover life in a setting that scientists didn't believe could support much of it, yet the wrong place for gathering seafloor muck. Smith is not a biologist, but his British Antarctic survey colleague Hugh Griffiths is. Griffiths saw a kind of film on the rock when he watched the video from the UK, which was probably a layer of microorganisms called a microbial mat. As sturdier, cylindrical sponges gripped the surface, a sponge that looked like an alien and other stalking animals hung from the rock. Wispy filaments that may have been part of the bacterial mats or even the strange hydroid animal dotted the rock. The nearest edge of the shelf where the ice finishes and the open ocean begins is 160 miles from the rock Smith unintentionally found. The closest place that might serve as a source of food is hundreds of miles away. This area would have sufficient sunshine to support an ecosystem and be in the appropriate position with respect to the rock for known currents to feed these organisms. It's not our place to tell life what to do, yet it has no business being here. These species are definitely living in complete darkness, which is great because many deep-sea creatures also do the same thing. Yet creatures that lead sessile lives at the bottom of the ocean must rely on a fairly constant supply of marine snow for nourishment. Every living thing that is currently swimming in the water column above will eventually pass away and sink to the bottom of the ocean. Other animals pick at the bodies as they fall and begin to decay and spit off fragments, tiny bits that amass even on the deepest sea floors. This is effective in the majority of locations around Antarctica where the seas are extremely productive. All species of fish, which in turn feed huge marine mammals like seals, are fed by tiny organisms known as plankton. All of this activity results in debris and dead creatures which eventually turn into marine snow. Yet, the Antarctic animals that inhabit this particular rock don't reside beneath a busy water column. They are buried beneath a mile of thick ice. Moreover, they are unable to leave their rock in quest of food. Being something that is permanently bonded to the spot is the worst thing in an environment where food is scarce and only seldom available. How on earth could they be feeding themselves then? The food source is traveling horizontally rather than vertically, according to the researchers, who believe it is possible that the drift of this marine snow has been turned on its side. The researchers discovered that there are fruitful locations between 390 and 930 kilometers away after studying current charts near the drill site. 
Even while it might not be much, it's possible that hundreds of miles worth of organic material are traveling through these currents to support these animals. Given that marine snow formed at the surface must fall seven miles to reach the seafloor in the deepest region of the ocean, the Challenger Deep near Guam, that distance is astounding. Food would have to travel up to 133 times that far, and it would have to do so by floating sideways to get to the animals on this Antarctic rock. According to Rich Mui, curator of invertebrate zoology and geology at the California Academy of Sciences, who has studied Antarctic sea life but wasn't involved in this new experiment, this isn't particularly far-fetched given what scientists know about currents surrounding Antarctica. Seawater in the area becomes denser as it cools. It sinks to the sea bottom and pushes water outward, radiating outward from the Antarctic, says Mui. And these currents are actually the germ of many, if not almost all, of the current systems on the planet. Something needs to fill the space left behind when that water flows outward, Mui continues. There's going to be some inflow to replace that, and that inflow, even over hundreds of kilometers, is going to carry organic matter. This would provide sustenance for our life forms that were trapped on that boulder. Moreover, the currents could introduce new species to the animal community on the rock. However, because they were unable to get samples, the researchers are still unsure of the precise diet of these sponges and other creatures. While some sponges are carnivorous and feed on small creatures, others filter organic debris from the water. That would be sort of your headline of the year, says Christopher Ma, a marine biologist at the Smithsonian who wasn't involved in the research. Killer sponges, living in the dark, cold recesses of Antarctica, where no life can survive. As the camera didn't catch any fish or crustaceans, Griffiths and his team are also unsure if other mobile species, like fish and crustaceans, also inhabit the area around the rock, making it unclear whether the sessile animals are subject to predation. Do they all consume the same kind of food? Or do some of them maybe share nutrients with one another? Or are there additional roving creatures feeding this colony in any way? Only a different trip can provide the answers to these issues. The animals don't appear to be in danger of being buried because it does seem that the sedimentation surrounding the rock isn't that heavy. Furthermore, it's unclear how these immobile animals first arrived. Was it something that happened very locally, where they essentially hopped from one local boulder to another? However, it's possible that their parents were on a rock thousands of kilometers away, where a more typical marine ecology begins and the ice shelf ends, and they discharge their sperm and eggs to float in the currents. Griffiths and his colleagues are unable to estimate the age of these animals since they lack specimens. Given the long lifespans of Antarctic sponges, it's plausible that this ecosystem is incredibly old. The rock may have been infused with life long ago, but currents have also added new life to it through the centuries. Also, the researchers are unable to determine whether this rock is an anomaly or whether similar ecosystems are typical beneath the ice. These animal populations might not only have happened by chance when the scientists put their cameras onto the rock. Perhaps they are a common sight on the seafloor beneath Antarctica's ice shelves. These floating ice shelves cover an area of 560,000 square miles, so there would be plenty of room for such ecosystems. Yet, only a space the size of a tennis court has been examined under them by scientists using earlier boreholes. It is therefore possible that they are many and we haven't yet located them. We might be out of time to accomplish this. Despite being hidden beneath a half mile of ice, this rock is increasingly in danger due to global warming. The collapse of some of these large ice shelves could result in the loss of a distinctive ecology.